And ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Two Schmo Show. I'm your host, the infamous Orion, and I'm Schmo. I'm Cairo, and I'm a Schmo. And have we done this new podcast format for a year now? We're getting really close. I to- think so. It's close. It's got to be close. Yeah, let me check. Um, we just crossed fifty, and it's there's been a few weeks that we've uh, been absent. <laughs> yeah, but I think it'd be very periodic if we somehow. Nope, June twenty ninth is when we came back with the podcast. Ah, yeah, we're close. We're very close. We'll have uh, almost a show on that day. Will be our show for that day. Um. Oh, Moving yeah. From the 28th to the 29th. Yeah. Oh, because it was a leap year, too. Yep. Oh, well. Yep, yep, yep. What a shame. Shame, shame, shame. How's your week been, Kyrell? <sighs> My week's been a week. It's always a week. <laughs> I got... Uh, I, I, I work weekends at my job. So I took this Sunday off to uh, be with some family who was visiting from out of town over the Memorial Day weekend. Um, they're from Nebraska, and they're looking to move back to Michigan again. So they were moving some things up here and uh, looking at scouting out some houses. Yeah. But what I didn't know is that when they were moving some things, that meant that they had three cars and a Penske truck full of th- things that they were moving. That's so a lot I of got things. roped in on my day off, helping them unload and move around their goddamn stuff. <laughs> that sounds unpleasant. It was, I don't know. It was nice to spend some time with them, but I would have much rather had spent that time not moving boxes. As we all would. But, other than that, it's been it's been fine. How how are things with you? Um, fun fact, y'all, I'm gonna be the most well paid gas station attendant this week in the world. Is that a fact? Let me see. Five dollars an hour. I don't know. For gas. I'm sure there's some German shit that makes like twenty dollars an hour because of their minimum wage. Oh shit! You're probably right. What is their minimum wage? Oh, right. This this is interesting. Okay. I think this is a good idea that uh, the U.S. should adopt to get around the issues where people are um, stuck in, like, dollars per hour wage situations where they're technically making above minimum wage, but they're not working 40 hours a week. Yeah. So they have to work multiple jobs. Most European minimum wages are based uh, on a per month system as i understand it that's how they're always represented it's like if you look up german minimum wage it's 1584 euro per month you compare that u.s minimum wage and it'll probably pull up the uh, dollars per hour which it does 725 but that guarantees that you know you work at one place and you get that as your monthly uh earnings man that I think I would rather have a monthly salary than a, I. Oh yeah, for, for sure. Yeah, that helps with budgeting so much more. Hmm. Does that include taxes, or is that just flat out the gross? I would assume this is before taxes. That's why I would think because too. I know they have pretty substantial taxes all around. Well, yeah, their their country does stuff. They do, they do things right. Our country's doing stuff too. It's just uh, taking taking a little bit. We'll talk about that later, though. Like the beautiful thing about the U.S. is that everybody has a voice. The most mm-hmm. disgusting part about the U.S. is everybody has to fight them over everything. <laughs> oh, that's going to be the most disgusting part is that everyone has a voice. Yeah, well, it, we do. That's the the most disgusting yeah. thing about this country. We have to fight ever over everything, and it's like it's great, but I, I hate it at the same time. Yep. Truthfully speaking, I'm glad we all have a voice. Truthfully, I wish we all just shut the fuck up. Yeah. Yeah. 
So today, we were, we were chatting about this before. Today is a certain actor's uh, birthday. And there's been rumors swirling around about that kind of stuff. But uh, Rotten Tomatoes has their article up for Tom Holland's birthday ranking all of his movies. Okay. And I did not realize how many movies he's been in Dude in is like prolific. the last two or three years. It's kind of... It's not really working. <laughs> Some of them seem pretty bad, but... I mean, he's fucking Spider-Man. People want him just for the yeah. star power alone. Like, when did... Homecoming was 2017, and most of them are after that, so... Checks out. I'm curious. Is he the most successful Spider-Man actor? Like, I know Toby kind of I fell off the map. Ass... Check. And we're only measuring like, su success based off the movies, the number of movies he's in, and not like the quality of his acting or anything like that, right? Because I feel like that's very subjective. When you put him against Garfield. Yes. Yeah, so we can basically just stop after one, two, three, four movies past the Spider-Man trilogy. He's apparently credited as having been in the Boss Babies. So that's an immediate you've failed at your career, in my opinion. Sorry, Holland. Oh no, McGuire. Oh. Wait, McGuire? It's Toby McGuire. Was apparently in the Boss Baby, yeah. As whom? I have no idea. I've not seen this garbage. Are you kidding me? Kyrol, I expect you to watch all the movies. Every single one. Oh my god, this has Jimmy Kimmel in it? No wonder I didn't see it. Fuck Jimmy Kimmel. Uh, it looks like it might be a typo on the part of Google because there's a no, I don't even know. I can't find him in here. He's not listed up there in the front of the cast, so it must have been a small piece if it's actually even legit. Okay. He's not really done anything. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, Andrew Garfield, what's he done? A lot. He's been much more. He did stuff before the Spider-Man movies, though, too. Yeah, Holland kind of just rose to prominence because he did a really good Spider-Man. Yeah, well, he was actually one of his highest rated movies came when he was still like a child actor, technically. Oh, really? He was in The Impossible, which had uh, Ewan McGregor and Naomi Watts. Huh. It's actually a really good movie. It's pretty. Uh, I don't even know how to describe the tone of it. It's not dark, but. But it's kind of like, I guess it's like that sort of gritty realism kind of thing where the whole premise of it is that um, they are a family visiting on like a vacation in Thailand or something like that. Somewhere in the you know Asia Pacific near the coast, um, Ewan McGregor, Naomi Watts, husband and wife, Tom Holland and uh, Geraldine Chaplin are their kids and the ocean side hotel that they're staying in is hit by a massive tsunami. Okay. And it goes through the aftermath of the tsunami and them trying to find each other again after that. And it's kind of like not a lot. It's very much uh, like a man versus the elements kind of a story where okay. they're fighting against nature to try and find each other and get back together and overcome like the injuries they've sustained. That's really interesting. It is. But he, this was in 2012. So he was like barely an adult at that even at that point 2012 how old was i because i know he's like the same age as me um he was he was very much still as a child actor he looks like a child because he is you know 14 i think we were 14 back then mm Hmm. they should probably have his age somewhere if this page will 15 load. 15 yeah he was very young yeah and then apparently shortly after that, he was in a movie called, I've never even heard of this, Lock with Lock. Tom Hardy. Oh, no. I I haven't heard of this at all. This page isn't working. Okay, thank you, Rotten Tomatoes. Very cool. <laughs> this is... A, it's described oh no that's not the right one uh, a man's life unravels as he leaves a construction site at a critical time and drives to London to be present for the birth of a child conceived during a one night stand hmm but it has a 91% rating what yeah so it must be 
apparently it's just an incredible performance from Tom Hardy that just carries the whole thing. I don't know. Yeah. The whole thing, the whole movie is from set in a single car. Would you watch a big daddy, um, a big daddy reboot, but no Adam Sandler. Instead, it's Tom Hardy and Tom Holland. A what? What? I don't know what that is. Oh, no, that's just an idea I just had. No, I don't know what that movie is. I've not heard of this. You've never seen Big Daddy? No. You grew up with like taste. that's for the better. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah, I didn't tend to watch Adam Sandler, thank God. I was forced to. Oh, my family thought Adam Sandler was the shit back in the day. No. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, John Stewart's in this. Dylan and Cole Sprouse. What the fuck? Yeah, they were the they were the kid. Oh man. Look. Yeah, I I've personally never been a fan of Adam Sandler's humor. I think he has like it's, it's just like I get why people like it, but it's like a paper bag. It just like you poke it. And it just, it's terrible. In my opinion, and like Adam Sandler works for one movie. If you try watching him again, you realize he's just ripping off that same movie over and over again. Yep. You can only watch an Adam Sandler performance once and then it's never yep. the same uh, good again. I'd agree with that. Same with Will Ferrell. Um, for the most part, I think that's true. Things like, uh, Anchorman have done enough to change it, like just enough to change it up that it's not completely repetitious. Yeah. But his older stuff particularly does get, it, it's a lot of the same jokes. Well, uh, I'm going to say this right now about most comedians turned into actors. They only have like one character. And then it gets repeated over and over again. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, Steve Carell is one of the few exceptions to that that I've ever seen, where he's been able to break out of his comedian sort of persona and actually just prove that he's a good actor. That's true. I'll give you that. But that's like, he's the exception to the rule, not the rule. No, he's not. For every Steve Carell, you get a Melissa McCarthy. <laughs> Pretty much. Apparently, though, I didn't realize this either. Like, I, this is the kind of thing that I probably we probably even talked about it, but I, I I heard about it. I never saw it. And I just kind of forgot that it existed. Uh, they did a, apparently like a Dr. Doolittle remake with yeah. Robert Downey Jr. And uh, apparently Tom Holland is in it. No way. Apparently it's his worst rated movie. <laughs> Tom Holland's in that. Yeah, I have no idea in what role. He's not even listed officially in the cast. His name is Jip in the movie. Mm -hmm. He's the sidekick. He plays Robert Downey Jr.'s sidekick. What the hell are they trying to do? Rip off yeah. the MCU? Basically. Shit. Yeah, I don't I don't know how I I mean, I guess I understand why I heard anything about it, but like I didn't even see ads for this. Tom Holland's got to have one hell of an agent. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Tom Holland and his very good agent. Yep. Now I have to look it up. You think if I find their agent, uh, they can get Tom Holland in on this? show probably we probably can't afford tom holland frankly if all those movies can afford tom holland we can afford tom holland <laughs> he's I, I don't know he's the starbucks Maybe. of actors <laughs> some of these are really questionable is one even out yet I don't I don't remember hearing about this. This must have been delayed. There's a movie called Chaos Walking that has Tom Holland and Daisy Ridley 
And Mads Mickelson? Nick Jonas? What the fuck? Yo, Tom Holland and I have something in common. What's that? We have dyslexia. Oh, yeah? I mean, I can only do it with numbers, but apparently he's full diagnosed. Also, apparently Tom Holland's kid and dad is uh, in the business as well. This sounds like a terrible idea for a movie. What movie? <laughs> for any, this is a, a quick review here. For any filmmaker contemplating their own young adult franchise, Chaos Walking is an instructive anti manual. For the rest of us, it's just noise. <laughs> Question for you. Yeah. Would you count this new Spider-Man trilogy that we've had with Tom Holland a young adult uh, series? Kind of like in the vein of Divergence in uh, The Hunger Games? No, I I wouldn't. Hmm. Okay. I can see why some might, but I wouldn't. I've had to question that a couple times. I... <sighs> I feel like that kind of s slides a bit into any movie that's focused on, you know, a young adult, a story that's happening around a young adult being a young adult film. And that's just kind of not true. Yeah. So that's sort of where I come from. It's very much still a superhero movie before it's a young adult movie. Okay. Fair enough. That's my, my thought on it. I mean, there are there are elements, sure, but it's not the primary thing. It takes a backseat to the other greater story. You're right. Oh my god! What you get? Uh, we'll we'll get back into movies later. This <laughs> is some cursed shit. What is it? Uh, they made a sequel to Spirit. Oh and shit! It looks you... like garbage. Yeah, I've been getting ads for that motherfucker. This looks awful. What did they do? All right, we'll get we'll get to this. It later makes no sense in the canon. That is, oh, yeah, no, none. And hashtag not it my looks spirit. Like, I'm kind of angry about that. Why? What I'm not angry about though <laughs> is uh, a wide variety of Israeli political factions coming together with the single shared common interest of telling Benjamin Netanyahu to go fuck himself. Go on. A bird. What? All right. There's a bird making a bunch of fucking noise outside my window. Oh, because all I heard was you yell at that bird. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so this is kind of huge. This is... Um, exactly what Netanyahu is trying to prevent with the continued aggressions uh, in Gaza towards Palestinians. Um, but a coalition of various government parties uh, from the far right to the far left have come together to form a, a coalition government that will be placing their own prime minister in power, which is believed to be uh, uh, Naftali Bennett. Hmm. Which I guess it's, you know, <laughs> it's it's time to learn about who the hell this guy is. But the, the very key detail is that he's not Netanyahu. What if he's worse? I don't think that's possible. What if it's Trump with a mustache? I'm From what I understand, um, his faction of... Uh, the right-wing parties in Israel was pretty specifically formed as a response to the actions being carried out by Netanyahu, where their goal is to continue their own uh, conservative views, but without the overt violence and corruption of Netanyahu's policies. That sounds pretty swaggity swag, Bragg. 
I mean, they're still very conservative, so yeah, it's it's not a full win, but it's better than what we have now. Very true. Very true. And there's been I I had to actually go digging to try and find an article about this that isn't terrible because there's so much politically charged rhetoric behind this and just outright kind of propaganda on both sides that it's hard to get a clear picture of what's actually happening. Is it even possible at this point to have any political discussion online without being subjected to propaganda, though? Not really. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. That's like that's been on my mind a lot lately, especially with the Israel and Palestine uh, situation going on right now. Mm-hmm. Which, by the way, kudos to everybody out there for somehow taking a very rather obscure American policy that not many people talked about, and then becoming sudden experts on it once it became um, important <laughs> in the news. All right. Yeah. So the uh, actual vote that will make this official takes place tomorrow. Okay. It has to be in about 12 hours in uh, their time zone. But this is seems at least to be pretty secure, given the statements that have been released um, by Naftali. The uh, key piece of this was that he came to an agreement with the uh, people on the opposite side of their political system. Uh, Yair Lapid. Lapid? Lapid? I don't know. Lapid? Something like that. So, yeah. Yeah. There we go. Let's go. Hopefully, we can get a bit less violence in that section of the middle east at least in that section of the middle east yeah you know you gotta take it uh step by step yeah and this is the kind of shit where i was having trouble finding a relevant article about this because the bbc's only article regarding it is Israel coalition government a threat to security warns netanyahu who gives a fuck what netanyahu thinks no shit he's going to warn that it's a threat to security because that's the exact fear-mongering he's been doing for the last decade to scrappily try to hold on to what little power he has left. Yeah. But no, that's that's news as far as the BBC is concerned. Really? I don't... Like, it's just such bullshit. Their subtitle is a quote from Netanyahu, fraud of the century. No, it's not! Like, pretend to be impartial. They can't. Like, And then, like, this whole article is so fucked up. The title is Israeli Co- uh, Isra- Israel Coalition Government, a threat security warns Netanyahu. And the subsections are fraud of the century and Netanyahu fights on. <laughs> Fuck off. That is just straight up propaganda. It's so blatant. Yeah. Well, that's how you get daddy Yahoo's money. Yeah, apparently. Yeah. Apparently Syria had an election as well that uh, to everyone and no one's surprise, Bashar al-Assad was re-elected to a fourth term in a landslide. <laughs> Go Who on. could have seen this coming? Yeah, this is like... Uh, uh, the election is being described as neither free nor fair by various U.S. and European by the U.S. and various European countries. Um, Assad said that the West's opinion counted for zero as he cast his ballot on Wednesday. Like, I don't know. He allegedly won with 95 percent of the vote. Come on. Not even our election was stolen that uh, stolen that blatantly. This is like just as bad as the shit in Belarus. Did we talk about Belarus? Did we get to that last week? 
Did we? I don't remember. I don't know. We'll we'll get to that because that was pretty. Uh... <laughs> it was something, but yeah, this is just like clearly complete bullshit. Seventy eight percent turnout, and he got ninety five percent of the vote. No, you just didn't. So apparently the government was held, uh, the election was held in government controlled areas of the country. Excuse me. And in some Syrian embassies overseas. Really? Mm hmm. Uh, let's talk about Belarus, though, because this is. Had its, you know, it's got plenty of its own misinformation swirling around and false comparisons. But uh, the short of it is that the government of Belarus called in a fake bomb threat. What? On an airplane flying in their airspace oh. in order to give their military the jurisdiction to force it to land. At which point they uh, arrested a journalist on board the plane. We did talk about this. Yeah. So there's been a few updates that have happened since. Okay. The chief one being that the alleged bomb threat they received didn't come in until about 20 minutes after they had forced the plane to land. No way. Apparently, that's how the timestamps on it work out. It, the bomb threat that they claim they received is dated and timed after they scrambled these jets to go and force this plane to land. Hmm. They're, of course, getting a huge amount of pushback because you can't just illegally detain hundreds of people because you don't like it. Oh, yeah. That's, that, that's not how this goes. Um, but the Belarus uh, journalist, activist... I believe this is the same guy that was arrested as a result of that um, happening was in a court uh, today, earlier today, and stabbed himself in the neck with a pen in the courtroom. Holy shit. Yeah. Footage appears to show Stepan Latipov collapsing after using what looks like a pen as a weapon on Tuesday. Latipov was taken to a hospital, but his condition is not known. That is some Epstein level bullshit right there. Mm hmm. Wow. Latipov is accused of. Oh, where did we go? Setting up opposition social media and resisting police during his arrest last September. He has denied all charges. And then he stabbed himself so, yeah. in the neck. Yep. Holy shit. Well, allegedly he's been. Since like immediately after his, you know, arrest, his detainment, he's been tortured, allegedly. So. Allegedly. Yeah. Man, that's messed up. Yep. Whole thing there is. Very, I don't know, It it's, you know, you keep seeing the same things over and over again. You know, oh, Belarus, Lukashenko won with like 95% of the vote. Oh, hey, look at that. Yeah. Syria. One with 95% of the vote. I wonder if they hired the same people. You think there's a business that just does that kind of stuff? Probably. I bet it's homegrown, though. You know, you got, you got to have your own local mobs. Oh, yeah, dude. No, they're all, like, um, they have to buy, like, the license to use the brand. Yeah. Yeah, it's like when a guy buys like the license to a McDonald's so he can start his own McDonald's, so he like has to hear adhere to corporate restrictions, but yep. essentially it's his restaurant. Franchised. Yeah, franchised. Franchised corruption. Yes. Yep. Yep, I believe it. Yep. All right. In other news, because you know, it's the U.S. Now that we are getting to the point where places are opening back up and uh, restrictions on distancing and mask wearing are starting to be relaxed, we're getting right back into full swing of mass shootings. Yeah, I was really disappointed about that. <laughs> yep. 
but apparently there's a mass shooting at uh, in the city of Hylia, north of Miami in Florida, where attackers used rifles and pistols to fire indiscriminately into a crowd outside the venue. Oh, shit. A shooting took place early in the morning, local time. No yet arrests. Officials say that the dispute may have been sparked by a rivalry and was not random. Uh, from what I've been reading about this, it seems that there it's potentially gang related. That's the the gist that I've been seeing so far. We had a shootout uh, over here a few weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was like a local fair going on in Wyoming, and a friend of mine was there, and apparently everybody started charging towards the parking lot trying to get the fuck out because some dude yep. did like a drive-by at the fair and shot some mofo, and everybody started panicking immediately and ran out. <clears throat> well, yeah. That yeah. seems like a reasonable response. <laughs> Doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Results of this shooting seems to be at least two killed, more than 20 others injured. Um, according to reports, it seems that some number of people in the crowd that are being fired on fired back. And <laughs> uh, police have been investigating. Country. They found more than 100 casings at the scene. Holy shit. So it's pretty big. Yeah. The Nissan Pathfinder van allegedly used by the suspects was reported stolen on the 15th of May was found submerged in a canal 10 miles from the scene of the crime. Jesus. Yeah, that's a lot. So they know what the hell was up. Yeah. Okay. Have you followed any of the uh, events with Naomi Osaka, the tennis player? Uh, I've heard a couple things, but nothing definitive. Like, not enough to piece, like, a full story out of it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, the gist of it is that she is a French... Uh, no, sorry. She withdrew from the French Open. I believe she's Japanese. Okay. And she was recently fined for refusing to attend a media press conference. And following that has withdrawn from the French Open, um, she says, to preserve her mental health, which seems very fair. Yeah, 100%. Can't fault her. Yep. She was the winner of the U.S. Open in 2018. Um, beat Serena Williams to win it. And the more what's the word for it substantial news out of this is the statement that she released on twitter uh in the days afterward elaborating on why she was stepping down um why she missed the press conference in the first place and you know all seems very fair hopefully she's able to um take the time that she now has to get herself into a better place yeah no i can never fault anybody for feeling that way you yeah. Unfortunately, plenty of people have been. Well, those people need to do this hardy thing I call fuck off. You know, the big thing was that she was fined for failing to meet, be at the press conference. Yeah. Because those are part of contracts, I guess. Sports media shit sucks. Mm hmm. I've seen a lot of people talking about how she should have done the, uh, oh, I'm just here so I don't get fined thing that Marshall did a few years ago. Yeah, I feel like people don't really properly estimate how that would actually go down if someone tried to do it again. Well, there's also like sports press conferences suck, I think. Yep. Like you're literally being bombarded with like a lot of people all at once. And it's a very overstimulating thing. Especially if you're already having, mm -hmm. like, mental shit go through your head. It's, like, the last thing you want. Yep. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of, uh, did you hear about that Biden press conference the other day? I don't think so. The ice cream one? Okay, yes. That I did. I didn't realize that was a press conference, but yes. Uh, I mean, not been a press conference, but it was definitely something with the press. It was very good. <laughs> 
I, I, I respect Biden a lot for how he handled that. Yeah. Should we talk? That's yes, please. Okay. I need to see if I can find a clip of it because it's just it's great. So Biden. That's was the at, kind of Biden we need more of. <laughs> Biden was at a uh, an ice cream stand, right, or some ice cream place, and uh, mm-hmm. he had some journalists talking to him, and um, they asked him what kind of ice cream he was getting. It was like chocolate, chocolate chip, which good choice. Fair too, enough. Yeah, too I much. can respect that. Yeah, and what did they ask him after that? They asked him like something. It was it was like something like what do you think oh about God. like the Republicans that think blah 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 blah. It was something like that. Yeah. What do you think of the? I think, Mr. Had... President, what is your message to Republicans who are prepared to block the January Six Commission? Eat some chocolate chocolate chip. Yes. Yes. Dank. <laughs> Love it. That's great. It is the funniest thing I've ever heard. So yeah. I I'm just waiting. It, we have what three and a half more years. Biden's gonna say the f word on mic again, one hundred percent. And I'm waiting for that day. Are, do you really think he's going to do that? Yeah, he already did it once. When? So there was God. Which one was it? He might have had it twice. Let me see if I can find it. Biden hot mic caught swearing. Um. Either find a link here. Either way, my point being, there's such stupid things to be like hounded by journalists about, like in those press like areas, that mm-hmm. um, yep. you have the goddamn president who's just trying to enjoy some ice cream. He was one thousand percent done with them at that point because he just wants to enjoy his chocolate chocolate chip. That he's literally just not getting away from the ice cream about it. So they're yep. not really that important. I agree. I'm not interested in your stuff. But, okay, I found it here. So this was 2010. This was a while ago. But this was after um, then-President Obama announced the signing of the health care reform bill that went to law. Um, Biden was, of course, with him there as it was presented. And after it, um, with the mic still live in front of him, Biden told Obama, you did it. It's a big fucking deal. <laughs> And then in 2009, he said to a former Senate colleague regarding uh, some stimulus plan at an event with Amtrak to promote a stimulus plan. He said to a former Senate colleague, oh, give me a fucking break. I like how Biden's the president that gets caught saying fuck. It's great. I mean, this was before he was president, but yeah. It was when he was VP. He, he did it a few times. I remember there was some other time when he was on a phone call with a uh, fire chief, I want to say. Something like that. And it was like just pure shop talk. Neither of them gave a shit. They were just chatting and swearing. It was very endearing. You know, very real sounding. Yes. I'm very curious to hear what Trump's like real talk was like. I don't think he had it. You don't think he had it? No. You think I was... think like I legitimately I think he's just so self-absorbed that whenever he wasn't in front of the camera, it was just working towards the next time he would be in front of a camera. Interesting. Probably I have nothing to refute that. I have no proof of that, but that would be my assumption. Mm. He seems to almost entirely lack wit or charm. So I can't imagine he would have any situations that would be particularly okay. interesting. He has accidental wit and charm at times. I mean, the only I wouldn't even call it wit. He just completely lacks a filter. And sometimes that can be funny. OK, there you go. You know, everybody likes to see the people that they dislike get shit on to a degree. Yeah. And you know, when the end of me of my enemy kind of thing, if Trump happens to be the one doing the shit talking, sure. Why not? Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, what else do we have? No fucking way. Okay. Do you do you have something else to talk about? Because I, I just found something kind of stupid. I don't go ahead. Um, there's a Billie Eilish photo book. Mm hmm. For an artist that's only been around for like two years in the popular conscience. Um, do you ever feel like that they're just trying to get their money's worth out of her? I'm not sure. I don't follow her too much, uh, so I can't really say. Fair enough. As someone who's stuck in the music biz, I'm stuck in the music. I can tell you, it's a little ridiculous sometimes. Mm hmm. I believe it. So I do have something I would like to share with you. Go ahead. Have you ever experienced the weird world of Monopoly spinoffs? Monopoly. Like, not branded Monopoly, but, like, actual spinoffs? No, more like Monopoly with, like, a twist. Uh, not really. Okay. Well, I present to you... <laughs> I fucking hate the title of this, but it's an official Monopoly program. Here's the listing for it on Amazon, and I will say the name of it. Monopoly Star Wars, the child edition, board game for families and kids ages eight and up, featuring the child who fans call Baby Yoda. Yeah, they're not even trying to hide it. No. Oh my, like, all of the characters are Baby Yoda. All the characters are Baby Yoda. Oh my god. This is so loud. Whoever made this ad can go fuck themselves. <laughs> We also have Monopoly Go Green Edition, which, who who buys this version? All of the characters are actually Baby Yoda. What the fuck? <laughs> All right, what's this one? The Go dope. Green. Green up to clean up. Eh, I can see that one. This one has the distinction of having a T-Rex piece. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. This is the kind of thing where as long as it's not more expensive than just Monopoly. Yeah. Might as well just get it, you know? Yeah. Plus, it looks like it has wooden pieces rather than plastic, so that's pretty neat. Um, ooh, how about Monopoly, the Godfather edition? The Godfather edition. All right, let's see this one. One of the pieces is a literal fucking AK-47. Oh, no, sorry, a Tommy gun. It's a, a Tommy gun, yeah. There's the horse Is that head. a sandwich? I think that's a cannoli. A cannoli. There's a fish. There's a fish. Sleeping with the fishes. Interesting. It otherwise sure looks like Monopoly. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love how there's no longer... Uh, Chance and uh, what's the other thing from Monopoly? Chance in uh, Community Chest or whatever. Mm -hmm. There's boss cards and concierge cards. Oh my. Yeah, that's kind of dumb. But now we have Monopoly Pizza Edition. Pizza. Buy a slice. If this board isn't pizza. circular, I'm going to be angry. All right, they've basically just ruined the game. Why even bother? Look at this. It's a cool box, though. I, I do like the box, but the board looks like shit. Wait, what the hell is this? Why is there, like, a pizza? I don't know. <laughs> That's not even a game piece. That's just a pizza. They're boardwalk and But it's like a 2D pizza. <laughs> All the, like, property spaces are types of pizza. Yep. There's, there's some whack shit. I'm sorry, what? Yeah, do you see it? What is this based on? I don't know. It makes no sense. Like, pepperoni is one of the high dollar spaces? Are you fucking dumb? <laughs> doesn't make any sense. Fucking olives is a high space. Eggplant. Ugh. No. Instead, the railroad just egg delivery. Plant. At least pineapples yeah, towards good. the bottom where it fucking belongs. 
Yeah. That, the, the only good thing about this is the box, though. Let's be real. Yeah. Uh, I'm a little upset they don't have to show the pieces. Yeah. Uh, up next in our Monopoly extravaganza. What do people are at age like, Chiral? People are age. Uh, avocado. N- no, we like SpongeBob and memes. So let's do oh, SpongeBob. Was, my next guess was going to say affordable housing, but that's good too. Yeah. SpongeBob meme edition Monopoly. Why? <laughs> Some boomer thought it would sell, and it's $40. What? It's forty dollars. <laughs> I'm gonna look at the price history of this real quick. Yeah, it's basically never changed in price. <laughs> oh my gosh. What the hell? I don't get any of this. This is dystopian. So they have, what are these? Comments and shares. Comments and shares. That's disgusting. This is beyond me. I do somewhat appreciate how these are all real memes, though, on the on the property places. Kind of. Is there any pictures? No, no one's reviewed it. They're just templates. Shame. So, like, they don't—they don't even have them templated right. No, they're not. <laughs> one of the lower ones is the "Okay, get in" meme with the coffin. Yeah. But it just says "Get in." Get in. <laughs> oh my gosh! What kind of curse shit? So there's, of course, uh, an entire Monopoly Wikia. No fucking way. And it has a list of all the Monopolies. Do they have our next one? Monopoly, a house divided? Uh, Let's see. This one, I think, is the most cursed. Yes, they do. Oh, God. (laughs) It's fucking Monopoly Democrats versus Republican edition. Oh, it's terrible. All the properties Why? are just hive and uh, swing states. <laughs> Is Michigan on there? Yeah, we're know, on there. It should be. We're we're one of the upper Where tiers. Are we? We're one of the yellows. Oh yeah, it's not too bad. Ohio ranks Ugh, higher. Ohio. Fuck Ohio. Fuck Ohio. Now, if this was real political monopoly, every space should be go to jail. <laughs> Basically. Yeah. Um, what the hell are these little things on the bottom? What? I, I don't know. Donkey, eagle, flag, teacup, peace, elephant. So those are the different playing pieces yeah but i don't get what the little tokens are for what scares me about this is every time we find a new one this seems like the rules changed a very little yeah so someone had to put thought into this Mm -hmm. now i have one more thing of monopoly before we can start investigating that wikia all right you ready for this one? Yep. Yep. <laughs> of course. Of course. David Bowie, Monopoly. Which one is the Labyrinth Square? Uh... <laughs> I actually don't see it. Oh, shit. Looks like it's just focused on his music, which is fair. Yeah. No, these are all in chronological order. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of they got the Berlin trilogy in their own spots. That someone made this with love. Mm-hmm. It does look like someone gave a shit when they made it. Yeah, I expected this to be kind of just a uh, cashing out. Yeah, I can appreciate the sound and vision instead of 
community and uh, chance just well, well yeah one of his songs is called sound and vision yep it's a nice touch i want to know what the pieces are oh my god what, what is this it's 80 dollars um for 20 bucks you can have the monopoly longest game ever edition oh no what's that I'll send you a link. The board is twice as big. No. Oh, no. No way. It looks like they actually just duplicated the board. <laughs> it does. It looks like a copy paste. It, no, it is. There's two collect go to uh, collect go. It's just the same thing. Uh, rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise. I like how the pieces are golden tortoises. Kind of. No, it's not. How does this balance? Are they? I have no idea. I'd assume it doesn't. Yeah. And it must get really confusing at certain points because the different rings go in different directions. How do you decide which jail to go to? <laughs> yeah. I mean, is there two jails? Yeah. Oh, God, there's two jails. There's two goes. There are two goes. There's probably there's probably some statistically correct answer here. I don't know it. Why would you have two go free parkings? You're not. Oh god, I think the board's just bigger too. Yeah. It's literally double the monopoly. Extra long game board. Believe us when we say it's long. It has 66 properties and there is only one die. No more doubles. Fuck you, Monopoly. Fuck you. <laughs> this is cursed. Wow. Wait a second. Okay, I was about to call shenanigans here. I thought they had two board, uh, boardwalks. Is it just one? There's, no, there's two. Are they both called boardwalk, though? I think so. They're literally the same value. Yeah. How do you know who owns which boardwalk? There are three I think boardwalks. There's three. Yeah. <laughs> this game isn't real. No. Nope. No. This game is hell. It chips with Prime, though, so, you know, free delivery by Friday. How much is it? 20 bucks. It's actually not that expensive. That's the. That's some pretty cheap torture. Mm hmm. Let's look at this list of Monopoly games, though. Yes, go on. There's so many. Holy shit. Oh, there's a review of this. Okay. Of Extra Long Monopoly. M my six-year-old son is an avid fan of the original Monopoly game. Thus, we wanted this version badly. Unfortunately, this game is awful and we are very disappointed. I'll return it ASAP. The pros. The game board is nice and thick. Cons. There's no money trace. So the money can't be organized. No money grab card. This used to be so much fun. New rules are not so interesting and there are only four tokens. Play with one die only instead of two. Not enough houses and hotels for every um, property. Extremely long and tedious to the point where the game is no longer fun. Some chance <laughs> community chests are rather absurd and not fun. And words on card are too small to read. So in other words, it's Monopoly. It's Monopoly in its purest form. Oh my gosh, there's so many reviews saying this game is so tedious. Like, isn't that the point, though? Yeah, but the, this is, like, three times I don't the medium. I know, but, like, you're buying the longest version ever. What did you expect? Uh, fun. Apparently there's a lot of these that aren't official. Okay. So that's why there's so many of them. Terrible waste of money. Seven. There are seven San Francisco versions. Why? Because fuck you. Do you want to guess how many Star Wars versions there are? More than there are movies. Oh. 
Technically, yeah. Oh, God. How many? 11. 11? Oh, some of these are just fictional. Wait, what? Apparently, there is a version of Monopoly called Star Wars Monopoly featured in an episode of The Simpsons. Okay. And that's on this wiki page. That's cheating. I want to know the leg- the legit ones. How yeah. many official versions of Monopoly are there? A lot. Do you want Monopoly for sore losers? Because that exists. Mm, I've seen that one. Don't get sad. Get even, it says. It doesn't show the board. I want to know what the board says. It's allegedly 243 different versions of Monopoly. Mm, the Amazon listing lets you, like, uh, zoom in really close on this guy's finger. I can see his fingerprints. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Monopoly Arcade, Pac-Man edition. Play Pac-Man every time you pass go. That sounds terrible. Yeah, it really does. Why don't you just play Pac-Man why would you... the middleman? Yeah, why wouldn't you just play Pac-Man or... What? What? Monopoly Sonic the Hedgehog edition. Monopoly for yeah, I don't get it. Bob Ross Monopoly. I have a question. What? Yeah, go ahead. Does Monopoly have a Monopoly on Monopoly-style board games? It doesn't seem to be the case. There's a lot of ripoffs. Good. <laughs> Someone thought this would be profitable to rip off. There's so much here. There's a Marvel 80th anniversary (sighs) edition. All of these are bad. Yeah. I don't think I've seen a good version of Monopoly yet. Mm Mm-hmm. Nope. Nope. I'm not convinced a version of Monopoly exists that is better than the original version that's not just a reskin of the original version. Monopoly Cats versus Dogs. Miss Monopoly? It's the Miss Pac-Man of Monopoly. Basically. Hey, Miss Pac-Man at least made some advancements. Celebrate women entrepreneurs and investors. Who is Miss Monopoly? She is Mr. Monopoly's niece, a self-made investment guru, here to change a few things. Parentheses, it's about time. Utilities have been updated. Wi-Fi and solar heating replaced the waterworks and electric um, company. Move like a boss with themed tokens. They're literally the same looking tokens. What the fuck am I looking at? Yeah, I've gotten to the point where I've stopped looking, and I'm starting at looking at some other bullshit. Dude, the park place of Miss Monopoly is chocolate chip cookies. Are they implying Miss Monopoly doesn't actually trade properties like her uncle, and she just buys things? Seems like it. That's a little sex, brah. So what else are you looking at that's cursed? Because uh, I, I want to get away from the Monopoly. So I'm looking at the spirit stuff right now. Oh, shit. That is cursed. I don't get it. Like they, they're, they're blatantly trading on a recognizable name to push something completely different. Okay. I know, I'm watching one of the trailers right now. Yeah, the point of this movie, it's a more modern spirit without 
that uh, Native American oppression and the damn white man coming down to harsh the vibe of your favorite horsey. Spirit, but if we took the subtlety out. I just don't get who had the idea of let's do a spirit sequel, only it's not focused on the horse. Like, that's the whole point that makes the original stand out is that it does that perspective thing completely differently. Yes. I just hope the horse doesn't talk. I haven't seen it talk yet. Okay, no, this is just dumb. I'm not even going to watch the last 40 seconds. That's oh, what, stupid. What happened to the Native American? Yeah, that's a good question. What happened to any of this? Um, Money. That's exactly what happened to it, man. This is what I don't get. Yeah. So like the original, the original spirit looks amazing still. Yeah, it aged like fine wine. It's because it's I'm pretty sure it's hand drawn. Yeah. So like no shit it looks great still. Why if you want to show your kids a good horse movie, show them the good horse movie. I want to know why they like I want to be in the board meeting where this spirit sequel got approved. It makes no sense. Hey, Kyrel. What's that? The guy she tells you not to worry about <laughs> versus you. Yeah. Yeah. I don't get it. Like, I don't either. I, I understand why the animation style has become what it is because it just must be so cheap and easy to do. But it looks like trash. It's called Spirit Untamed. I thought the whole point of the original movie was you couldn't tame Spirit. And now here you are raising some little girl's pet. Yes. Yes. And the animation looks so bad. It's like you kind of forgot what the original movie okay, was no. about. Okay, no. I'm going to send you a picture. I'm going to okay. send you this. Okay. I'm sending you this. We're going to break down why this looks like absolute garbage. Well, first things first. Is this the son of Spirit years later? Is this a descendant of Spirit? Like, is Spirit just a No, this is, this is Spirit. This is Spirit. The same Spirit? Allegedly, yes. <laughs> Allegedly, yes. Oh my god. He's got friends now. Horse oh, friends. Yeah. Oh my god. Yes, Queen. If yes. I remember right, the one on the right was the female horse that was the other main one in the original movie. Can I talk about how much I hate this angle you sent this photo? Um I... Oh no, this is their own promotional stuff. I want to talk about something else. Though. <sighs> Uh, yeah, I want to talk about how they have lighting coming from three directions in this. Oh, God, you're right. They have lighting coming from the top left, the bottom left, and the top right. Yes. And it makes it look like garbage. It makes it look like... Honestly, if you want, like, the, the shadows are behaving like a light should behave. Right, but there's too many lights. Yeah. And then they also have, like, the instead of, okay, so apparently people don't know this. Let me look up, like, let me just look up horse and go to images. Like, do these people not know what a horse is? Horses are really hard to draw, dude. I mean, horses are hard to draw, but horses have hair. Yes. They don't have static. They don't That's have That's what it looks like. It looks like they, instead of drawing hair, they were like, okay, we'll just take 
shadows from a bunch of different angles and it'll just look kind of fuzzy and we'll call that hair. Yes. We, we've done all our work on the actual hair physics and we can't be fucked to do the rest of it. So we won't. Can I say how much I hate this angle now? It's terrible. This angle, you can see the underside of the horse and yeah. horse dick. Where's the horse dick? Yep. No, no horse dick. Horses horse have dick. very protrude dicks. That's a fact of mm. nature. And I understand God, all of these. Who the hell? All right. What? You just pull up. Have you, are you on the right? Have you seen the Rotten Tomatoes page? No. I'll show you the Rotten Tomatoes page. This Show is easier. Rotten Tomatoes page. Sending you all this bullshit. Free dick my spirit. <laughs> all of the lighting in every scene is just wrong. What the heck? This is bad lighting. Like, uh, of course, little girls are going to be more interested in it and not care about the lighting, but kids deserve better. They do. They should just watch the original one. The original one was at least trying to be art. Yeah. This is trying to be a fantasy. It's bad. So you can see the sun in the promotional photo, like where it's mm -hmm. the poster. Mm -hmm. And um, why is the light like... So the sun is behind them, obviously, into the mm -hmm. side, towards the right. So where is that light in the front of them coming from? Filming lights, of course. Yeah, it's it's like if the sun was oblong and was like taking up half the horizon. Yeah, it's bad. That that lighting is. Three D animation is hard, mainly because you have to stick. Oh, with your absolutely. Lighting. Yeah. But they're not even trying. No. <laughs> God. I, I'm afraid. I'm really, really afraid of this movie. Mm -hmm. It's really disappointing that, that DreamWorks still has their name on this. This is the kind of thing that I would expect them to farm out to, like, some B team. Yes. Some, like, not even a B team, a B studio. A B studio. DreamWorks is better than this shit. They made... They made The Prince of Egypt... And I'm not going to go for the memes and say Shrek was a masterpiece, but Shrek also had a better understanding of light than this did. What was the last good movie they made? Uh, let's see, shall we? It's been a long time. Go to their filmography. Theatrical animated feature films. Oh, this page hasn't been updated in a while. So we had... Nope. Nope. I guess technically How to Train Your Dragon to Hidden World. Really? Captain Underpants. Yep. That's not on the list that I'm seeing. Oh. Well, Captain Underpants is pretty good. Was that DreamWorks? That was and DreamWorks. was it a theatrical release? And it was a th theatrical release. Then I don't know. Oh, no. Hidden World came after uh, Captain Underpants, so technically it's still that. So, I, I, I see an upcoming list of, like, DreamWorks films coming up. Mm -hmm. and there's Spirit Untamed. Which shouldn't that be spirit semicolon untamed? Um, the boss. I, I honestly don't know. <laughs> the boss baby family business. A film called The Bad Guys. And Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. The fuck? Wait, what? Where the hell does this link to? What you mean? Uh, if you click last, excuse me, if you click last wish, it just links to the main article. Hmm. In August 2020, the name Puss in Boots Last Wish has been trademarked by DreamWorks. It's apparently all we know about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
And there's this thing called the bad guys. Yeah, what the is that Scarface? An American computer animated heist comedy film produced by DreamWorks based on the popular children's book series of the same name by Aaron Blabby. Okay. Written by Etten Cohen and Hillary Winston. Scheduled to be released April 15th, 2022 by Universal. Animated by DreamWorks. Okay. Film centers on several reformed yet misunderstood villains known as Mr. Wolf, Mr. Piranha, Mr. Snake, Mr. Shark, and Miss Tarantula. The five tire of their life of crime and decide to live their lives as forces of good. What the fuck? So this is called The Bad Guys. We'll just look up that. See if it'll pull up the book. No, I don't want the movie. You don't want the movie? The movie's not even out yet. Oh, there's apparently multiple books of this. There's like seven. <laughs> and of course, the number one hit is Billie Eilish. Of course. There's 14 books. <laughs> what? That's a lot. <laughs> apparently the books are decent enough, though. I feel like kids' books definitely have a better consistency than adult books. Yeah. They have the seal of approval from Dave, Dave Pilkey, so that says something. Yeah, Dave Pilkey is like the best around. So what are these other movies that we have? We have a new The Conjuring movie. Oh, boy. That's still going on. Apparently. What else do we have? I know literally no one acting in this. This is terrible. <laughs> uh, something called Undine, which has already been certified fresh, but I haven't even heard of this. But it's got like 60 plus reviews and it's apparently good enough. Hmm. Christian Petzold boldly reimagines the ancient myth of Undine in this suspenseful tale of romance and betrayal in modern day Berlin. Undine, Paul Beer, works as a historian lecturing on Berlin's urban development. When the man she loves leaves her, the myth catches up with her. Undine has to kill the man who betrays her and return to the water. Will Undine defy fate when she meets a diver offering her a chance at new love? So I guess you kind of have to know the source material to understand what the fuck any of that is. Yeah, seems to be. What else is there? I'm not really finding much. There, there's, yeah, there's not a bunch. Yeah, we're still... I feel like we're gearing up for the movies to come back any day now. Yep. Yep. I'm curious. I didn't see how the Cruella movie ended up. Oh, shit. You don't know anything about the Cruella movie yet? Not its reception. Okay, I was about to say, you, you've seen that comic I posted on here, right? Oh, yeah, no, I've, I've seen plenty of that. Yeah. There's not much of 101 Dominations out there. Dottie's Mouse, Source Material, or its classic 1961 animation, animated adaptation to be found inside Disney's Quella and I'm Perfect. So I guess people people like it, I guess, even though it's not the same, but like... <laughs> If it's not the same, why give it the same name? Yeah. I that That's what I don't get with these. There has to be some remarks given to the... I don't even know how to describe it. Unoriginality, blatant greediness. Um... I really don't know what to make out of it because like who need who asked for a film on Corella Deville? No one. No one. And that's kind of what I mean though. Like from what I'm reading this seems to be a film that stands up on its own completely beside all of the Cruella stuff. Yeah. So why not just take that chance and just make it be its own film? Internal marketing. Yeah.
So this is a review from a uh, just a user, an audience review. And I feel like this does a good job of explaining why people like it. Okay. But it just has me asking why why? <laughs> just why? Just why? Um, they say Disney does the Devil Wears Prada in this reimagination of the iconic villain from 101 Dalmatians following the somewhat turbulent trend of Melissa. You know what? It really worked for me. Especially love how the film utilizes the cultural phenomena of the 1970s punk in the UK by marrying the aesthetic and spirit to Cruella's character and juxtaposing it against the conservative fashion world she battles. My only gripe with the film really is the titular protagonist plays it safe and never touches it deep enough on the darker, crueler side of her character. Fortunately, expected a Disney production, but would have made the transformation much stronger probably would have left the writers make the narrative thematically clear hmm. like i get that that's all good that seems fine but like why is it cruella then all of these animated disney prequel all of the disney prequels full stop have me asking that we know where it goes there you can't do that much of a twist you can't tell that much of a unique story because you have to tie it back into the source material you're playing it from say from anyways so why not tell a more exciting, engaging story that has people wondering what's going to happen next rather than knowing where it's going to have to go next? I like to refer to these as the, what's the word I'm looking for? The Revenge of the Sith of Disney movies, because we all know where it's going from the very beginning. So the whole film is basically just a giant, like, non-story because we already know how it's going to end yeah and when i i just what's the point in a story where you already know the ending yep that's one of the things that rogue one did really well was that we knew where it tied into the greater star wars story but because 100 percent of the characters were new yeah it made it so they could tell an original story that makes you give a shit about what's happening and leaves you genuinely surprised by its conclusion. You know what? Rogue One was a better Revenge of the Sith, and it's a Star Wars film. Mm-hmm. You ever realize none of like the prequels really introduced that many new characters? While that is true, I think the prequels served just as much to bring the Star Wars fandom to a different generation as they did to serve as actual prequels. Okay, fair enough. And I think in that, they are very successful because for a lot of people like myself who the prequels were one of their first exposures to Star Wars that they can actually you know remember because when you're a child, you don't retain that much. Yeah. Um, not knowing what comes after them makes watching the prequels the first time better. Yeah. But it is a problem with any sort of prequel. Is that you can only do so much before you're eventually going to get stuck right back to where you are. Unfortunately. Mm Mm-hmm. I just, I don't know. Uh, I don't know where else we can go with this. Because, like, no. Rogue One definitely did it better than, like, any of these movies can do. Mm. And I think it's based entirely on the fact that we know where the greater plot is going, but we don't know where the personal plot is going for most of the characters. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> why what um i'm skimming the top box offices right now on rotten tomatoes and one of these is from 2018 i'm very confused as to why it's just now being popular hmm what movie is it uh it's called unthinkable or the unthinkable I think I've heard that released in. it says this was released in 2018, but all the reviews are relatively recent. Hmm. Hmm. 
so we can find out something about this. That's really weird. Is that just an error on Rotten Tomatoes' part? Could be. So its initial release was in 2018 in Sweden. It must have just had its international release. Mm. Looks like it was part of a Swedish film collection. Okay. So it had a limited release, and now it's had its full release, which has pushed it back into the limelight. Coolio. Mm-hmm. Du blomstertet nu. The fuck did you just call me? Uh, it's the title of the movie. Oh. Don't you speak Swedish? No. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> did you tell? <laughs> no, I couldn't. You sounded very articulate. And I felt very attacked. <laughs> it's working. It looks like it's about it for movies. Is there anything coming soon that is worth a shit? Uh, no Way Home. That's a bit out still. There's apparently something called Rogue Hostage that has... Oh, he's not credit. Like, you can't not credit him. He's on the. It's got John Malkovich in it, but he's like not credited in the cast. But he's literally on the cover. Interesting. Very confused. Rogue hostage: Tyrese Gibson, John Malkovich. Well, who else? Wait, what? Single father and former Marine Kyle Snowden, played by Tyrese Gibson, must save his daughter and other hostages from a dangerous criminal who has trapped them inside a neighborhood store owned by Kyle's polarizing stepfather, Congressman Sam Nelson, played by John Malkovich. What? <laughs> so this sounds like they had a grocery store that they were allowed to film in, so that's where they filmed everything. Sounds about right. Interesting. Comes out June 11th. Okay. Waiting with bated breath. Yeah. It's one of those things, though, where you can, like, if you throw John Malkovich on half of your cover, I'm going to click on that because I'm just going to be like, hey, what crazy shit's John Malkovich up to now? Uh, he's finally doing that Aragon sequel he always wanted to do. Oh, God. <laughs> Hope not. Yes. I want it. It's the kind of thing I wouldn't mind a legit remake of, like of the first one. Yeah. But done without dated CGI and without like, like it really needs a full rewrite. Yeah. Because it's the first era, the the Aragon, the first one reads a lot like it was written by a teenager because it was a talented teenager, but it's, it's dated now. It needs a, a bit of a freshening up. I would love to see Christopher Paulini try to rewrite Aragon from an adult perspective. Mm hmm. Because yep. um, you can kind of tell he didn't know where he was going at first. And yep. uh, I would love to see how he handles stuff now as a more matured uh, writer. I'd like to see a version of it that's not just a blatant ripoff of Star Wars. That's what I was going for. It's medieval Star Wars. Get it right. <laughs> Is it though? It's a totally different Star Wars. Murtag was his brother, not his father. Get it right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Uh, what is Christopher Paolini doing? It's a good question. What has he been doing? I assume because I haven't heard anything. He's probably just still writing. Yeah. Uh, oh, Lini. Oh, he's doing a lot lately, I guess. American author. Yeah. Looks like he still might be. Oh, he's got his own website. Yeah, that's what I'm on right now. Yep. Oh, shit. He made alleg. What, what is this? That's neat. Do you see what I'm seeing? Yeah, the Minecraft thing. Yeah. Yep. Allegasia in Minecraft. Yep. I mean, I want to check this out now. He's got his own YouTube. <laughs> he does. Yeah, that's where it's posted. That's beautiful. 
did he make it or do you have a whole bunch of people make it i don't know trying to see here yo like 12 year old me would flip the shit out over this it doesn't look like he made it but this is his touring the world someone else made that's pretty balling I'm watching that later. Mm-hmm. How long is this? It's 45 minutes. Oh, wow. Yeah. He rocks the default skin in Minecraft. What a Chad. <laughs> what a Chad. I mean, I could I could see if he, like, maybe doesn't play that much yeah. or at all. But, like, somebody reached out to him and was just like, hey, we did this thing that's kind of cool. And he's like, you know, that is pretty cool. I'll check it out. Yeah. I could buy that. Looks like they did a pretty good job. Yeah, I think so. The images are really crushed pretty badly, but from what you can see, they look good. Anything of the scale is going to be impressive anyways. Like default. I, I'm very impressed by Minecraft builds. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in what the hell this other thing is. Introducing Salvo Falcone. What's that? I don't know. <laughs> I can tell it's been fucking forever since I've read these Aragon books because I'm looking at the location, like, timestamps in the video, and yep. I can't even pronounce these anymore. <laughs> so it looks like he's started a few other, or at least one other series called To Sleep in a Sea of Stars. Yeah. During a routine survey mission on an uncolonized planet, xenobiologist Kira Navarez finds an alien relic that thrusts her into the wonders and nightmares of first... Oh, okay, so this is Subnautica, but a book. Yeah, that's what I was seeing. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's legit. It's, I'm sure it's good. I mean, he's, he's a talented writer, so... Started pretty can't young. Can't say too much. Yeah. Yeah. Let me see. When does... I think we're coming up very quickly. Oh, it's next week. All right, we'll save it for that then. Uh, that? Loki starts up next week. Yes. My so. girlfriend is dreading it. Really? She, she wants to watch it, don't get me wrong, but she okay. she knows how I am watching those shows. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm the worst. I don't know. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. I think it has good potential and the trailers have been engaging enough. Yeah. Here's the real question, though. What the fuck is this Modoc thing? Have you seen this? Oh, the Hulu series? Yeah. Why does it look like they made it with those uh, crazy bean character things? I remember what those are called. You know what I'm talking about? The Mighty Beans? Yeah. Yeah, I remember those. Like They're like jumping bean ripoffs. Yeah, it looks like they took those and just stop motioned them almost. Wow. I really got nothing else. I just don't get why. What, Modoc? Yeah. Because he's like the most cursed looking character in Marvel. I know, that's my point. <laughs> why? <laughs> this isn't even the right article. Well, uh, I have a few other things here. So. Uh, I need to get ready for work, though. That's fine. Yeah. We could probably save it for next week. Yep. Okay. Sorry, everybody. Well, any closing comments, Mr. Kyrill? Uh, nope. 
Okay. Spirit looks gross. Spirit I'm, does look I'm gross. insulted it exists. <laughs> Are, were you a fan of the original Spirit? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Never mind then. No, it was it was up there for me for uh, that era of animated movies. I liked it. Fair enough. It had, it had an awesome soundtrack. It did. I'm really glad they never got Phil Collins to score it. Mm. Feels like a Phil Collins movie. Yep. Anyway, I'm Neef Miss Ryan, and I've been a Schmo. I'm Carl, and I've been a Schmo. And this has been the Two Schmo Show. Keep your nose clean.